Recently, it has become trendy for corporations to advertise their efforts to become carbon neutral, which at first glance seems like a commitment to rid themselves of fossil fuels. While this is an admirable cause, it's a little too good to be true. How can a car rental company like Avis possibly achieve carbon neutrality when its whole business model is based on a fossil fuel reliant form of transportation? In reality, the majority of this carbon neutrality is based not on changing business practices, but instead on purchasing carbon offsets to counteract a large chunk of their emissions. So today, I'm going to answer a few questions. What are carbon offsets? How do they work? And are they effective? Carbon offsets are essentially a trading scheme for carbon emissions. When someone purchases an offset, they are investing their money in an environmental project somewhere around the world. These projects include everything from building new solar installations, to planting a tree, to lighting methane releases in landfills on fire. Clearly, the types of offsets vary widely, and it's often pretty difficult to figure out where the money is actually going. Additionally, because offsets are so varied, they run a wide spectrum of effectiveness. And if you do want to counteract the emissions of a long car ride, for example, you'd have to buy through a company like TerraPass, which invests in a range of renewable projects that capture methane from landfills and abandoned coal mines. So again, it's hard to know exactly where your money is going. But do carbon offsets actually lower our global carbon emissions? In short, not really. Carbon offsets act as a band-aid that allows the root problem to continue to exist. A factory can keep on pumping out greenhouse gases by pushing the responsibility onto a wind farm halfway across the world. By buying into the idea that markets can solve problems that markets created, offsets may slow the more fundamental changes that need to happen in our economy, government, and society. As Naomi Klein, author of This Changes Everything, points out, when a company buys these offsets as a way to justify their continued rate of fossil fuel emissions, it's one step forward, one step back. At best, they are running in place. Whether the offset is effective or not is just one part of deciding whether they are a good piece of the solution to climate change. There are also important ethical considerations to weigh as we as individuals are deciding how we approach carbon offsets. The Guardian journalist George Monbiot likens our use of offsets to the way in which people from 15th and 16th century Netherlands absolved their bad deeds with purchases of indulgences, a system in the Catholic Church wherein you could donate money in order to rid yourself of sins. On the ground, some carbon sequestration efforts can do much more harm than good. As is the case for the Norwegian-owned Green Resources Forestry Offset Project in Kachung, Uganda, which has violated the basic human rights of the local residents, undermined their livelihoods, and threatened their very survival. Although this doesn't reflect all carbon offset projects, there have been enough of these schemes to give rise to the phrase carbon colonialism. This can't be a path forward. Instead, climate justice movements and initiatives need to work in tandem with more human-centered justice movements and initiatives, and vice versa. If you feel the need to alleviate your guilt from a long plane trip via carbon offsets, consider addressing your guilt head on. You may still decide to purchase a carbon offset, but definitely do your research. Know what kind of offset you are purchasing and realize that it's not addressing the core problems that lead to climate change. Even better than carbon offsets are giving money to an environmental justice group doing good work in your area. Or try to reduce the amount of times you fly in the year. For companies and individuals, offsetting should not replace the hard work of trying to reduce emissions in any way possible.
If you're struggling with carbon offsets or have to fly a lot and don't really know what to do, I'd strongly suggest heading over to my fellow YouTuber Levi Hildebrand's channel and watching his video on carbon offsets. It's a really honest look at dealing with a high impact lifestyle and it's basically the part two of this video. So go on over and check it out. You won't be disappointed. Hey everyone, if you did end up enjoying this video, I've got a lot more lined up for the next couple of months, like the environmental cost of fast fashion. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, share the video around, or support the channel financially on Patreon. All of that helps me out a lot. Otherwise, I will see you in two weeks.